Okay. Uh, my family's cattle company name, Horngren Livestock, right there. Okay, this is a very unique building. This is our, our barn, but over a century ago, it sat across the road from where my house is now, my parents' house is now. It was actually an old school, and when the new school was to be built, they were able to jack this up off the ground and move it across the street, and it's been a barn here on this property for over a century. About a decade or so ago, my parents had that roof put on to try to preserve it and make sure that uh, it lasted a long, long time. All right, here are our corrals. We always called this one the first corral and the second corral is down there a little bit uh, further. Uh, these cows are heifers that are being saved. They weren't sold from... They were not sold from this year's group. They're getting fattened up. Then out here, the corrals are really, really full of manure and straw. This is where they uh, stay the winter at. Some of them stay the winter at. It's been a really wet, wet spring, so it's really soupy and nasty looking. It'll dry out over the summer, and then this fall, it will be all hauled away out into the fields and used as fertilizer. Okay, this is out in the third corral area. In the springtime, the natural spring dries up, and so until the cattle get moved up to the ranch up in the mountains, they do have to trail in and get water. We have some tubs set up with a water pump to put water in. We also have automatic drinkers over there as well that can fill up. Uh, this is the best tasting water around. It comes right from the straight from the ground up through the water table and through the aquifer. Or the uh, the natural it naturally filters itself. It's really really good tasting water. Best stuff around. Okay, this thing here is called a chute, and that is spelled C H U T E. When the cattle have to be moved on the big trucks to move them up to the mountains. Uh, they get put in through this pen right in here, and then they walk up here. The chute has special steps we've put on it so they don't slip, and they come right up, and they go up that ramp into the truck. Okay, this area right in here is when we had horses. It was a horse pasture. We had a horse for a long time named Lucky, We've had other horses over the years. And then this pasture out here, we only pretty much use that during the springtime. It's a calving pasture where the cows can come in off the fields. When the fields start to grow, you can't have the cattle out there because they eat all of the hay. And so they come in here, those little red sheds down there that I showed you in other film clips, those are for when the weather's nasty like it has been, and they, the calves can go into those sheds to get out of the storm. Uh, my brother brought, bought some property next door, and that's where we do a lot of the calving as well. That's where we were feeding the cows when I filmed previously. Okay, here's a back view of that shed, or excuse me, the chute that I was talking about, where the cows go in and get loaded. The little red building that you see in front was our old granary when we used to store grain and then chop it up for feed, but we haven't done that for probably 30 years. It's been a long time. Now, in the springtime, we have what is called branding day. My eighth grade classes, when we did our roundup, we talked about branding day, or we will talk about it. The cows, the calves are brought up here, excuse me. They're put into this green little contraption right here. <clears throat> They're pretty small, so their heads don't fit much through this hole right here. But if, if we ever have to work with larger cows, their heads go through there. You can actually hold their heads down so they don't rear up and hit you right there. Then the cows are brought in here. The calves, excuse me, are brought in here. And they have to be uh, worked and doctored. Uh, they all get an ear tag, although recently we've been ear tagging the calves as they've been born. 
Boys get an ear tag in the right ear and the girls get one in the left. Um, you do brand them on their left hip and you also give them their shots. And sadly, for the male cows, they have to have an operation. Uh, if you don't castrate them, which again means to remove the testicles, if you don't do that, they produce all of the hormones and uh, then the meat is really, really bad and tough to eat. And so that's what you do. Uh, a bull becomes a steer. Uh, this little gate here, you close that behind when they're in there. One of the jobs I had to do was I would stand on the other side of the green bars right there, and I would hold the calves' tails and hold them still so when they get branded in that, it doesn't uh, mess up the mark. And my younger brother would would come back here and he would usually be in charge of moving the calves up and make sure we had plenty to do and my mom and my sisters would would be working also with either air tagging or giving them the shots or whatever the case may be oh okay this old pen right here hasn't been used in many many years it's actually been moved from its original spot it's probably been three decades since we've used it but this used to be called our pig house when I was a little kid and we raised pigs uh, we had this set up in the pig pen for them to go in for shelter and it was just a little small house we just keep some storage items in there now again it hasn't been used forever uh, <clears throat> I did have a pet pig when I was a little kid about second grade I had a pet pig named Wilbur and one day I came home from school Wilbur was gone. Yes, Wilbur was gone. And we had plenty of bacon, though, and ham for the year. <laughs> okay, this is an interesting spot that has a very different purpose now. This is our old corn pit. Back when we used to raise corn to grind it up for silage for the cows to eat, this is where you would come in and dump the corn and make a great big huge pile. It would be many, many times higher than the cement wall that you see right there. Then you would cover it up with plastic tarp and put old tires on it to preserve it. And then throughout the winter you could scoop the corn out and eat it. The cows love silage. It's really good. And uh, now we just store equipment and different things in here out of the way. And that truck right there, that is a 1953 Ford truck. When I was eight years old, I first learned how to drive that. It is a stick shift, and it was kind of hard for me to reach the clutch, but I did learn how. Uh, it does still have its sides on it. We don't use it anymore. It's been years since we've used it. But you could uh, grind up the corn and put it in there, or you can take off the sides and make a flatbed truck and haul your hay with it, which is what we did too.